So obviously I am just a little bit late to this one, but I wanted to talk today about the Bloodhounds that were revealed by Expansive Worlds a couple of days ago because ever since that trailer dropped, there's been so many questions in live stream chats and comments about my opinions on Bloodhounds, and I'm sure most of you guys have seen the trailer, I'll link that in the description if you haven't. From what I've seen, it actually looks quite interesting, and I'm really looking forward to seeing what they can do because we do have tracking hounds in the Hunter Classic, and in a bit here, we'll actually go and kind of look at what they can do to maybe get an idea of what to expect for the Call of the Wild release. But I really think that there's a bit of a difference in tracking wounded animals in Classic versus Call of the Wild, because the distance between tracks in Call of the Wild is a lot less, and there's skills that can actually help with that. So if we go into our skills here, it's the first one under Locate Tracks. The levels really help, you get the directional tracking cone getting smaller, and then the distance you can see tracks from actually gets to be greater with the skill as well, so it helps you and I just think tracking in Call of the Wild in general tends to be easier, especially once the animals hit. So this happened to be a decent sized Red Deer Stag, 212 Mythical, I actually like this rack a lot by the way, I'd love to get a rare stag with this Mythical rack, but anyway, we'll go and get something to kind of take a look at just how tracking is on an animal that we're not instantly dropping. And then I think we're going to go into Classic and kind of compare that a little and just see what the Hounds are capable of in that game, just to kind of see maybe what we could at least expect a bit from Call of the Wild. So it might have been wishful thinking coming out here to Quattro Colinas and hoping to find a level 9 Red Deer, but that is exactly what we have out here. He's the big rack and a 231 to 277 score estimate looks pretty good, so I do want to kind of take a look at tracking. So we're going to try to get into a position to take what I would kind of consider the safe shot with the 270 because it's a lower caliber for Red Deer, something that is definitely not going to bring it down super quickly. And I just want to kind of go for hopefully at least a single lung shot if not double lung. So we'll try to get up here broadside. I think this is about as good as we're going to get. About 140 out and if we can just kind of go prone here, we're under all those branches. So once he lifts his head, we'll try to just stick a shot right in behind the shoulder just about like that and we'll try to keep an eye on him and see how far he goes I mean he's definitely out of sight for us so tracking him will definitely be necessary we're not going to know exactly where he goes down like from the spotting icon or anything I don't know exactly what direction he'll go but this is going to be a scenario where like we definitely would want to track it and I'm sure making a vital hit will be able to track him ourselves but I just want to just kind of see like how easy the tracking is I guess so here is our vital blood, and we can actually see three tracks ahead. So having those skills that I talked about at the beginning actually make a huge difference, and I would say this is kind of the norm. There's plenty of situations where there's like a ton of tracks in an area, or just things happen to where we don't have this many tracks, but this is basically like what you should expect, just plenty of tracks that you can see out ahead and pretty easy, consistent tracking. And I guess my point is just that, even with a lower caliber weapon, in the ideal situation you definitely don't need a tracking dog's assistance, but we have ourselves a 263.8 diamond red deer. That is, what, like 9 or 10 better than our personal best? Long shot him there at the 270. But yeah, I definitely didn't expect to go and get a huge diamond red deer like this for uh, just something to talk about for the dogs. But just to go back to that, we're using a pretty weak caliber for a red deer, and we're able to take him down fairly quickly. The track was easy, and I mean, it's far from the ideal scenario when we're just dropping the animal in his tracks, but there's a lot less ideal uh, tracking situations, and I think that's more what the dogs are going to be useful for. But I do want to go into Classic now and just kind of see what the Sethounds are like in there, just to kind of get an idea of what we could maybe expect for the Bloodhound release. So coming over here to Classic, we have our Sethound Razor with us, and we're going to actually go after Red Deer again with basically Classic's version of the same gun just to hopefully have a gun that's going to consistently single along the Red Deer and give us something for Razor to track. So we'll head out, we'll see if we can get one or two decent stags to have him track, and just kind of take a look at how it works and at least the way I would kind of expect Call of the Wilds to work just because a lot of things that have come from Classic into Call of the Wild have been quite similar. I'm hoping that we can at least get some idea of what we might see coming up. We must have actually spooked him getting down here because he's acting kind of spooked, but that's a pretty average sized Red Deer Stag for Classic. And if he'll actually stay out there broadside, it's a bit of a far shot, 
which I think might be better for us with the 270. So ideally here we can get a single lung shot, so we have another stag stunning off. Hopefully that's what that's going to be. And what we'll actually do is mark where he was, because we have to get to a blood track. And hopefully a razor is going to be able to track him down, even though we can actually see where he went down. We'll still be able to see kind of how the tracking mechanic works. And the good news is, we'll know uh, that we're going to be able to find this one. So what we need to do is click on this track here. Hopefully Razor is going to get up here. And then we can go to the commands, and there's a bunch of different things here which we'll look at in a moment. But if we set him on that to track it, he should just start going from track to track. And it's kind of actually similar in this case, where we can see two tracks ahead like we could in Call of the Wild. But the fact that we did make a lung shot on that is definitely going to help. And it really depends. I just feel like the times that the dogs would be the most useful is when maybe the shot's not as good. Because, of course, we watched this guy go down. But you can hear Razor's going to bark and basically let us know that he found our red deer. So, one other thing we can do is give him a treat. Hopefully he'll kind of stay near us. Let's just get him to come back. I don't think there's any animation with the dog itself. I can't remember for this. I don't know why he is so intent on running around. Let's get him to sit still. I'm pretty sure it just does a little generic animation. Yeah, so the thing we can do to give him a little bonus XP. We'll claim our red deer and go on and hopefully get another one. Maybe one that we won't see die in sight, but from my experience in the Hunter Classic, usually the dogs aren't that good at finding ones that have been shot maybe a little less ideally. But hopefully he's going to want to come with us here. We'll go and try to find one, and I think we'll try to make a long shot again. And I guess before we go anywhere, the other commands that we can see for the dog, obviously track blood can only be done when we find a blood track. We can get him in and out of a ground blind, we can have him lay down, sit, stay, and come to us. And of course, the stay command is quite good for when we have an animal that we're trying to call in. He'll actually just lay there, and I think you can go like 200 meters, maybe a little further than that, before they'll come running to you. And it's good that they will actually eventually, like, come back to you, so you don't have to basically wait for them to run forever if you would forget about them. So we'll have him follow us, and hopefully we can go and find another stag and try this again. Well, no wonder there weren't very many red stags where we were. We've got three in this area, and two of them are just really, really sad. I think we might try to go for one of them. The one is broadside, and it's kind of a far shot again, so if we can get a shot in there, it should just kind of be single lung, and maybe this time we won't get to see whichever one we actually go for go down in sight. They're all broadside, so... If any of them stop, ideally one of the smaller two. I'd like to get a broadside shot because I think the 270 might kind of struggle with a frontal shot. So maybe if this guy wants to cooperate. All right, that's kind of out there. So we might need to aim high. I think that hit just about right. Now the thing is, we actually have to have a blood track to trail him. So the initial spot where we hit him, we can mark that area, but he's not going to leave any blood there in the water, so we actually have to find blood on land. And I think that's something that I actually wanted to highlight in this, because assuming that Call of the Wild works the same way, and they have to be like an injured animal, and you have to have a blood track, it is kind of important to pay attention to, especially when it's maybe an animal you really don't want to lose. Shooting them in the water like that can at least have a bit of a negative impact. So that is going to be body blood, which is not what I was hoping for, but I do want to show it. We know that we're on the trail of the red stag that we shot, but we've not clicked on a blood track yet. And even though there's blood right there, we actually can't have the scent hound trail him until we've ID'd a blood track. As soon as we go over and do that, we'll have that option unlocked for him to actually track him. So I'm going to guess that's not actually going to bring him down. But we'll still get to see kind of the fact that the scent hound's going to struggle to track this one because the tracks are going to be a little farther apart not being lung blood. And that should actually slow him down, but we might get to get another stag in the process of kind of doing this. And already, he's kind of sitting down because he can't find the next track. And he was kind of sitting on the last one, so I'm kind of surprised it was that quick. <laughs> but that is usually how it works, and he's only level 20. Dogs can go up to level 50 in Classic, but as I understand it, even the higher level Sandhounds still struggle with some of the more poor shots. And again, he's just not able to find the next track, so... I do wonder if they're going to work the same in Call of the Wild to say like a very low bleed rate. And that is just a thing where only time will tell, but I just do wonder if it's, you know, those tracks where you really do need the dog's assistance. 
if they're going to be able to be a bit more helpful than in Classic, because obviously, like, a lung hit one, they're not going to run that far and they're usually pretty easy to find. But these ones where the shot doesn't go as planned, that's where they might be a little more wanted, but a lot of times it seems, at least in Classic, they aren't the most helpful. And in fact, that is our stag out there. I don't know if that one that ran over there might spook him, but before he goes anywhere, we'll get another hit in him. That one I think is going to do a little better, and especially the fact that he was already hit. I think he might go down regardless. We'll see if we can see where he got to. And we can actually even see he's just down right up there. So at least we got him, and we'll get to see how low he's going to score. But I want to have Razor resume the trail and actually go and find him. For one, to actually gain a bit of XP for it, but also just to show that they can actually resume the trail eventually and recover the animal. But again, it's kind of requiring our assistance, and I just want to get back to that point that it's usually these trails where you need the dog to help, and at least, you know, at the lower levels that I've seen personally, a lot of times they're not the best at that without a better shot. Now this time we hit him in the lungs, and it looks like Razor's kind of in the right direction. He'll probably get it figured out in just a second. Looks like he got it figured out, he's just going to climb the rock and everything. So, our tiny little red deer stag, body shot at 250 and then lung shot at 172 was 88 score. Not the most impressive, but just a little look at how scent hounds work in the Hunter Classic, and I really did want to kind of make that point that they do tend to struggle with the like poor shots and tracking those animals, because I do wonder if that's going to be a thing in Call of the Wild, but as I mentioned, the dogs have levels in Classic, and as they level up, sometimes they unlock more skills. Now, for the scent hound, all the skills are unlocked, but the pointer, for instance, can basically find other animals as it levels up, and I do wonder if they'll kind of take that system into Call of the Wild. So we're going to go back to Quattro Kalinas for a little bit and hunt around and talk just a bit more about kind of like hopes for what Bloodhounds will be, but hopefully at least getting to see Scent Hounds in the Hunter Classic will give us some idea of what to expect for the Bloodhounds in Call of the Wild. So actually, this works out quite well because one of the things that was talked about a lot in the streams was like, what are the dogs going to do with aggressive wolves or aggressive Cape Buffalo or anything like that? And I'm quite intrigued to see because there's a lot of things they could probably do with it, but I would sort of expect that they would at least have some kind of mechanic to deal with them because it happens quite a lot, especially with like the Cape Buffalo and the Water Buffalo, but even the wolves, they do go aggressive often and You'd have to think there would be some kind of interaction between the wolves and the bloodhounds. I'm kind of hoping that the bloodhounds will sort of try to step in between like the hunter and the wolves, but that is something that will remain to be seen. But there were a couple of things that I really wanted to focus on when we went into Classic, and the big ones were the fact that they had to be an animal that was already shot. They can't trail just like any uh, random track. They have to have blood. And the other one was the levels, and we'll talk more about both of those in just a second. Just happened to get a all of fur type gold Iberian wolf there, so that's actually kind of nice. And I don't really know what to do about this. I think we'll just kind of leave these guys alone. So this is just a super common situation. We have a max weight estimate red deer track, and in this case we can see the next ones. But a lot of times it's not like that, and we can't find the next tracks. And it would be just super useful sometimes if the bloodhounds could follow that, even if the animal's not been hit yet. Now luckily in this case we can just find him and see that he is just a level 7. But it happens all too often that tracks are a lot more difficult to follow and there's plenty of times where we get a max estimate track and just never do end up finding it. So I at least am holding out some amount of hope that maybe we can level up the bloodhounds to a point where they'll be able to actually track down animals that haven't been shot yet. Because I feel like that's where like the most long-term utility comes. Because I mentioned earlier that I think the blood trailing is going to be useful for like newer players that maybe don't have that locate track skill to where you can see tracks farther away and all that stuff. But there's still going to be times, of course, where an animal that's been shot by even an experienced player maybe isn't leaving a lot of tracks and maybe the bloodhounds can help more then. But I really am just most interested to see exactly what they'll be able to do. But our red deer is a gold at 185. But that's why I wanted to highlight those couple of things with like the leveling system in the Hunter Classic for the dogs and the fact that, again, in Classic, the animal has to be hit before you can actually have the dog trail it. I just would love to see, even if they start out only being able to trail animals that have been hit, 
maybe eventually if you could like train the dog or level it up to a point where it can trail animals that haven't been shot yet, I really feel like that would be a huge thing to be able to have that asset. Because it happens all the time and it seems to be more common in multiplayer, but just tracks that seemingly lead nowhere and maybe the dogs could be a solution to actually finding some of those animals and it would be great to have that in your back pocket even if you don't always bring the dog with you if you run into one of those tracks and you want to know what the animal is you could maybe go to a tent or the nearest outpost get your dog and maybe he could help you out so i'm hoping for that kind of thing we'll have to see but just the kind of thing where i feel like that would have the the biggest impact for the most amount of players but anyway we'll have to see what's going to come to that it's all just kind of speculation and everything at this point, but as I said, in the live streams, a lot of you guys were asking my opinions, and I wanted to both give opinions and take a look at kind of maybe what to expect from the Sand Hounds in the Hunter Classic, but in the process of doing this, we did get ourselves a Diamond Red Deer out of multiplayer, so we'll go back to the Trophy Lodge and place him. And actually, as we're walking into the Trophy Lodge here, one final thing about the Bloodhounds that I'm at least hoping for, somebody mentioned in one of the live streams that I guess the devs said the dogs would be able to like follow you into the lodge or be in the lodge or something like that. And I really have no idea if this is confirmed, so I don't want to say that's definitely going to be a thing. But I've been given my sort of hopes and maybe expectations for the Bloodhounds anyway. So even if that's not official information, I hope they can be in the lodge. That would just add a little bit of depth and realism to like having them. So I'm hoping that's going to be a thing. And I'm sure you guys in the comments can let me know if that is actual like confirmed information. But anyway. We have our diamond red deer up here. We had a legacy rack diamond mule deer there forever. And I like the red deer a lot more. There's just something about the extra size there that ties that wall together. And the fact that he is a 263.8, like 10 above our personal best, it's just really cool to get our best red deer ever. Just as we're walking around hunting for stuff to have in a bloodhound video of all things. But I like that up there. I think he's gonna stay. And yeah, lots of stuff definitely to look forward to with the bloodhounds and a lot of stuff that we're just going to have to wait and see exactly how they're going to work, but as I mentioned, I'm excited regardless, and I really just want to see what they're going to be capable of and how the devs kind of implement some of those things. But anyway, that is going to do it for this video, so thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time.